members of the city of Tarpa Springs on Tuesday, April 14, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. Ms. Jacobs, roll call, please. Mayor Lahuzis. Here. Vice Mayor Tara Penny. Here. Commissioner Sieber. Commissioner Carr. Here. Commissioner Donovan. Here. Commissioner Sieber is here also. Yes. Tonight's invocation will be given by the city, uh, city attorney, Mr. Tom Trask, following by the Pledge of Allegiance led by uh, Commissioner Ray Sieber. Our Heavenly Father, as the citizens of the city of Tarpon Springs meet together to address our local concerns and opportunities, we give thanks to you for the bounty that we enjoy in all aspects of our community life and for the peace and beauty that we enjoy each day. We ask for inspiration to strive for excellence in our endeavors to serve the public, grant us peace in our world and harmony between all people to your greater glory. This we pray, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice. And justice. Oh. Thank you. Do you not hear me? Yeah, we, got you. we can hear you, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we can hear you fine. All right. Um, I would like to announce that due to the health crisis that we are facing and to be in compliance with the governor, DeSantis, and the Pinellas County Executive Orders, along with following the uh, CDC guidelines, the uh, Tarpa Springs BOC meetings will be conducted by a video conferencing and providing the, for public comments until such, a, such time the uh, orders have been lifted. We are now going to the public comments of the items that will not be discussed tonight. If anyone has any comments, please state your name and your address for the record. You'll be given four minutes. Mrs. Jacobs, do we have any emails? Um, yes, we've received one email. Thank you. Um, this is dated April 13th of 2020. It's from Panayotis Kulyas, 595 Peninsula Avenue, Turpin Springs, Florida. Dear citizens of Turpin Springs, on March 17th, Mark LaCourse ordered a state of emergency for the city of Turpin Springs due to COVID-19, which was <clears throat> Governor DeSantis ordered a state of emergency for the state of Florida. Multiple sources have reported to me that Mark LaCourse and department heads were already self-quarantined with full pay and benefits two weeks prior to Mark fourth BOC meeting while they ignored the safety of the essential city personnel. The essential city personnel do everything to keep this city at its best, everything we take for granted. By March 30th, I was receiving so many complaints from sources that our essential city personnel's safety was being ignored that I was forced to voice their concerns. These essential city line workers were working full time, exposing themselves and their families to the risk of COVID-19. I felt it was my duty to send an email at 10.44 p.m. on March 30th to the commissioners, mayor, city manager, asking that they immediately address these dangerous shifts of our essential city personnel. I requested that these essential personnel be broken up into smaller crews and that they be permitted to be on call for their homes for emergencies only. Obviously, I couldn't come up with those suggestions all by myself. Let that sink in. While this pandemic was ravaging our country, I was stunned to see Mark swimming in his kiddie pool on March 30th at 4 p.m. while on a ride. While the essential workers hadn't noticed any shift changes. On March 31st, the city manager finally addressed our essential city personnel and took their safety into consideration and only after he received my email on March 30th. For three weeks, Mark LaCourris and department heads were self-quarantined while our essential city workforce was exposed. We need leadership by example and we need leadership that does not sit in a kiddie pool on our tax paying monies. I hope everyone's been safe during this time of crisis and doing their best to social distance. 
we as a nation are trying to flatten the curve. Once we are back to normal, we will be back stronger than ever. And the citizens of Tarpon Springs want their agenda push. Yes, Tarpon Springs, I represent your agenda, your interest. My fellow Tarponites, it's time to address one, removal of the old guard, two, breaking up the good old boy network that has plagued our city for half a century, three, double dipping from our taxpayer dollar, four, unqualified city management who don't have the transcripts to prove it, five, an overfunded police department that drains us taxpayers, which goes back to the city manager, six violations of general order policies our police officers commit without consequences, seven, a corrupted internal affairs system in our police department, Eight, bogus executive pensions we Tarponites are suffering to pay and making sure no corrupt officer reaches the 25 year employment mark. So we the citizens aren't suckered to paying a pension for life to undeserving officers. Nine, code enforcement seizing property of the poor for the good old boy network and their underlying real estate agenda. 10, code enforcement harassing and picking on certain citizens because of vendettas. 11, premiums we citizens pay on water and waste management that can be reduced. 12, using social media to be more transparent with our citizens than ever instead of posting pictures for ego. 13, and most importantly, saving a year in taxpayer dollar for you Tarponites by receiving one expense at, at a time. Um, the four minutes were, were up and the rest of this will be as an exhibit to the minutes. Thank you. Do we have any other emails? We have no other emails. Thank you. Ms. Dallas, do we have any attendees wishing to speak? Uh, would any attendees wishing to speak please raise your hand at this time? Okay, we do have one. Give me a mark. Ah, yes, Paniotti Kulias, 595 Peninsula Avenue. You already spoke. You already sent us your letter. This item's not on the agenda. But you already sent us a letter. Amen. You email. What, we were supposed to have the procession for Friday. Has that been discussed yet? You already spoke on the uh, public comments. Will there be extra security for the church? You on already Saturday spoke. Well, thank you very, very much. Ms. Dallas. Would you please take us to the next one? Uh, there are no more raised hands at this time. Thank you very much. We are now going to the presentations, item number one for Commissioner Rea Sieber. Commissioner Rea Sieber, on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, I would like to present you with the scroll plaque and I'd like to read it. And it says, uh, Rea Sieber, in recognition and appreciation of dedicate, dedicating devoted service as city commissioner 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020, City of Tarpa Springs, Florida, Mayor Chris Alahuzas, Vice Mayor of Town Soterapani, Commissioner Ray Sieber, Commissioner Jacob Carr, and Commissioner Connor Donovan. In addition to that, um, a diver helmet, which he represents, which is actually the symbol of our uh, culture, was actually presented to uh, Commission Sieber as well. Um, Commission Sieber, I don't know if you uh, made arrangements to pick it up from the uh, city clerk's office, since we ca I cannot present it to you from here. I'll be making arrangements. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. And now we'd like to go to uh, Commissioner the comments and I, I would like to start with uh, Commissioner Sieber. Okay, I do have a, a statement written out because I knew I would mess it up if I didn't write it out. Uh, so first I wanna congratulate Commissioner Costa Buddy Kiotis. Um, your heart is in Tarpon Springs and you've already had a lot of experience here uh, serving our city. I know that you'll always vote your heart and what is best for Tarpon Springs. I have to try to do the same, and I'm happy to have someone like-minded filling the seat. I also want to congratulate uh, Commissioner Carr on his re-election. 
I've been honored to serve the residents and business owners of Tarpon Springs for the past six years, and I've taken my job very seriously and always put what I felt was best for our community first. Thank you for electing me in 2014 and trusting in me and reelecting me unopposed as your commissioner again three years ago. So much has happened over the course of my term. I've grown a lot, learned a lot, and been more involved with our community than ever. I've always believed in service and have served our community since I moved here. As a counselor at Tarpon Springs High School, as a business owner, as a president of the Tarpon Springs Merchants Association, as a member of the city's budget advisory committee, and as your commissioner. I continue to be a member of the Tarpon Springs Merchants Association, the Rotary Club of Tarpon Springs, the Chamber of Commerce, the Women's Club, and I support Peace for Tarpon and the Community Garden. I was also a graduate of Leadership Pinellas in 2017 and continue to be a member. I recommend this year-long course to every elected official. Thank you, David Banther and Judge Jack and Nancy St. Arnold for recommending me. I recommended Chief Scott Young and Major Jeff Young, who also completed the course in 2018 and graduated. As you can see, I have plenty to keep me busy after tonight. Although I do plan to take more time for myself to be with me, myself and my family. We've had many significant improvements and changes in Tarpon Springs in the past six years. One of our most significant hires has been our economic development manager, Karen Lemons. We've helped many new businesses, restaurants, and breweries open thanks to grants and incentives Karen proposed that were passed. Do you remember what our historic Tarpon Springs looked like six years ago? I sure do. There was a little 1925 historic building on Safford that was purchased and transformed into a restaurant with 30 beers on tap while keeping its historic character. We now have several breweries, restaurants, and new shops downtown that have helped make a difference. In addition to the redevelop redevelopment of downtown, we've had many other accomplishments these past six years. To name a few, our state-of-the-art reverse osmosis plant opened. Our dog park, splash park, and outdoor exercise area was built, and later our kayak launch opened. Lowe's was built and opened. Walmart opened at the closed Kmart site. A state-of-the-art gun range reload opened. Fire start Station 71 was built and opened. The launching of the research vessel WT Hogarth happened on 517. We negotiated a long-term lease with Advent Health, which will now result in a state-of-the-art hospital for Tarpon Springs. I initiated our first community garden, Jesse's Garden, mm -hmm. that has been very successful. Thanks to all the wonderful volunteers who helped me get the project started and continue to make it successful. I was also honored to be invited to New York City to represent Peace for Tarpon and Tarpon Springs to speak on a panel of Cities Thrive Conference on mental health. That was quite a memorable and beneficial experience. We're also close to the completion of the Mayor's Extension Plan, which I ran on. Uh, we've had a balanced budget since 2015, and we survived Irma. There's more that I've forgotten, I'm sure, but I don't think you all want to listen to me all night. We've also had a significant amount of residential, develop residential development and beautification projects. More recently, I've been meeting with a small group of merchants on the sponge docks and listened to their concerns and needs. Thanks to our city manager and Tom Function, our director of public works, there were some improvements made that were much needed. The street lights on Dodo Canes were not working and were repaired. We had banners hung, none had been up there before. Uh, Athens Street had lighting installed around the poles. We have new street signs written in English and Greek. We have new business signs for Athens and the west end of Dodecanese to help support our business owners in those areas. And the reopening of Zorba's is being completed. We had 11 closed businesses on Athens Street not too long ago, and now we only have three remaining. I have to uh, commend the Merchants Association. We had our first tree lighting with the city and uh, our first Christmas event, Christmas on the Docks, sponsored by the the Merchants Association. I also commend um, you know, the Merchants Association for what they do for our city, not only to bring visitors to Tarpon Springs, but also to make it more fun for our residents. We had a lot of new events while I was president of the Merchants Association and they've continued to add more events like 
our very popular First Fridays. Their earnings after expenses go to marketing our city, which is much needed. As a business owner, this is a great organization to help and belong to. I also want to commend our volunteers, our Public Arts Committee. We've had some beautiful additions to the city. I initiated the idea of adding arts to the roundabout at the west end of Dota Cunez as an attraction and at the end, as a piece of art. Thanks to the committee, we have the beautiful naiad sitting on Greek stone imported from Kalamnus. The mermaid or Ama is also a beautiful addition at Green Park, plus our bicycle racks all over town and our most recent addition, Christopher Stills Art on the Marquise Building. I, congratu I congratulate all of our volunteer boards for their service and wisdom, and I'm happy that we plan on showing them our gratitude annually with an event, which is something I asked for. I am honored to have worked with our accredited fire department and police department. I will miss working with you. Some of you have become my friends, and many of you, including Chief Scott and Chief, Chief Cochin, uh, have become my friends. I was honored to go to the Florida Law Enforcement Accreditation Ceremony last year and see our police department receive their award. I will miss so many things. First of all, our amazing and dedicated employees. All our department heads have been a pleasure to work with and I respect all of them and feel like we're friends. Our city clerk department and all of our, and all of your Halloween parties and beautiful employees, Irene and Michelle, you are the best. I have so, much fond mem so many fond memories of our delegation to Greece exactly two years ago uh, with both of you. The mayor, Vice Mayor David Banter, and his wife, my sister, and I will never forget it. I will also miss the annual league for city conference, uh, city, 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 annual city league conferences that I've attended the past six years. Not only did I learn a lot, but I was happy to meet city officials from all over uh, the state of Florida and to make friends with many of our Pinellas County uh, officials. And, and that was always a joy to me. I, I, I really got to know the, the officials from this county and other counties, and I learned a lot from them. In closing, I hope some of the ideas I recommend it will be championed by, the, by this or our future boards. I've been honored to serve you as your commissioner. I'll see you around. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Schieber, I would like to uh, congratulate you. We didn't always agree in some things, but as a team, as the Board of Commissioners, we accomplished a lot. We completed many projects, as you already stated, with a balanced budget, without using any of the reserves, and we actually reduced the millage twice. Commissioner Sieber, uh, you're stepping down to, due to the term limits, and you serve six years. We appreciate your service to the city and to the people of Tarpa Springs. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you. Vice Mayor Terrapin. Thanks, Mayor. Commissioner Sieber, I definitely want to take the opportunity to thank you for your service and congratulate you on uh, your past six years. We all know uh, it's oftentimes a thankless job and uh, you've, done, you've done a good job and we appreciate everything, all of the contributions that you've made. Um, we've said, I say oftentimes that as a board, if we can all play to our strengths, you know, we'll be a really strong board. And I feel like you offered a lot in your strengths uh, as it relates to your relationships with the merchants and the business owners. And I think that that's not something that uh, can be overlooked, um, especially as we're in a time like this with the COVID crisis and so many of our businesses and merchants are closed, you know, you kind of get a perspective on what that's like. So I definitely want to mention and, and uh, give you thanks as it relates to your relationships with those people and, and as, as you've championed for them throughout the course of the years. And also, you know, as a merchant yourself contributed positively to the diversity of goods and services that are offered throughout town and uh, the role that you've played with some of our special events that have really uh, helped bring the residents out and give them something to support. So thank you for all those things and uh, I wish you health and happiness and uh, spending time with your family and your granddaughter especially and uh, hope to see you around. Thank you. Commissioner Carr. Thanks, Mayor. Commissioner Siebert, thanks for your service for the past six years. Uh, as we all know, this is a servant's role, and uh, we have to have a lot of sacrifices on our personal life uh, and business life as well. So thanks for your service. All the best on your travels and uh, your next chapter of your career and uh, life. Thank you. Thank you. 
Commissioner Donovan. Yeah, congratulations, Commissioner Siever. Thank you so much for serving on the board and all the best. Thank you. Commissioner Vaticuris, do you want to say something now? I just unmuted, Mayor. Can you hear me? Sure. Yeah, I, I, as you know, I'm taking Commissioner Siever's seat. As such, I really wish to thank her for her six years of great service and her kind words to me. Um, I also wish to thank Commissioner Siever for her efforts as liaison with the uh, sponge docks businesses and all her other projects that she listed. I know her hard work is going to be greatly appreciated in this. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner LeCourtis, do you want to comment? <laughs> no, it was great working with you, Ray, and, uh, and I'll be seeing you around. Chief Cochin. Um, same, Ray. I wish you the best in all your future endeavors. And um, you know my number if you ever need anything. Thank you. And Mr. Trask. Ray, it's been a lot of fun working with you on the commission. Um, thank you for your service. Congratulations for the past six years. I'm looking forward to working with you on rotary projects in Tarpon Springs. And I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Ms. Jacobs. Um, yes, uh, Commissioner Sieber, it's been a pleasure working for you for the last six years and with you and I wish you all the best. Thank you. We are now going to the public comments. Ms. Jacobs, do we receive any emails on this item? We receive no emails. Okay. Ms. Dallas, do we have any attendees that wish to speak on this particular item? Any attendees wishing to speak, please raise your hand at this time. We have none. Okay. Again, thank you, Commissioner Seaver. Thank you. We are now going to our consent agenda. Item number two is the minutes. A is March 24, 2020, regular session as corrected. B is April 7, 2020, special mm -hmm. session. And that's also as corrected. Number three is the attorney feeds. A, Trask and Dino, the invoice on April 2nd, 2020, and B is Johnson and Jackson, invoice 5925 and 5926. Any other items that you'd like to pull? No. I hear none. Uh, is there any, uh, are there any commission comments on these items? Oh. No. Hear none, okay. Uh, <laughs> Ms. Jacobs, do we have any uh, emails? We've received no emails. Okay. Ms. Dallas, do we have anyone that is speaking, who likes to speak on this item? Anyone wishing to speak, please raise your hand. We have none. The chair will obtain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. And roll call. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Tierpenny? Yes. Mayor Lahuzis? Yes. We're now going to the resolution, which is item number four, resolution 2020-10, ratification of election results. These results were uh, certified <laughs> by the Pinellas County Candidacy Board. City Attorney, if you please read the resolution. Yes, Mayor. Commissioners, resolution 2020-10, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida ratifying and confirming the results of the municipal referendum election held on March 17, 2020, in conjunction with the presidential preference primary and providing for an effective date hereof. That was the rating of resolution 2020-10 by title only. Thank you. Are there any commission comments? No. I hear none. Uh, are there any public comments? Ms. Jacobs, do we have any emails? No emails were received. Thank you. Ms. Dallas, do we have any attendees wishing to speak on this item? Anyone wishing to speak, please raise your hand. We have no. Roll call. I'll make a motion to approve, Mayor. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Terrapani? Yes. Yes. Well, that concludes the uh, current board agenda.
And are we going to the staff comments? Chief? No comments, Mayor, thank you. City Attorney? No comments, Mayor, thank you. City Manager? No, sir. City Clerk? No comments, thank you. Vice Mayor Terrapani? No, sir. Commissioner Sieber? No, thank you. I think I took up enough of your time. <laughs> Commissioner Carr? Uh, just real quick, Mayor, I'll make a quick uh, um, comment. Thank you, uh, Chief Cochin and Chief Young and the Mayor for leading the, I'm not sure what you call it, parade of uh, emergency vehicles in front of the hospital tonight. Um, it was touching and heartwarming to see uh, the support of um, our, all of our public servants that are out there in the front lines from our police department, our fire department, our EMS, and then all the nurses and doctors and staff out front there to receive that. So great job and everything you're doing. I know this is a stressful time for all parties. Um, you guys are our front line and we really, really appreciate everything you're doing for all of us. Thank you. Commission Donovan. Uh, yeah, Mayor, kind of in the same light, um, you know, obviously Little League Baseball season was canceled, but kind of in the spirit of all coming together, Little League Baseball donated their concession food to local families and brought all of their stocked food and drinks for the season to hospital staff. Um, so that's just a great example of one of our local nonprofits giving back to the community. Thank you. i also like to uh, congratulate and to thank our police department, our fire department, for organizing this uh, car parade and driving in front of the hospital to express our appreciation to our um, uh, to the hospital employees, to the hospital professionals, for the doctors, to the nurses, the staff, for working in a difficult situation they are now to serve the people of Tarbor Springs. Thank you. It was great. Well, that concludes the uh, regular session, and it's adjourned. Signed, I at. 6.57 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, how do I get off of here? <laughs> I think uh, Frank is the one who knows how to do that. I'll go ahead and move you over to an attendee. Okay. Mr. Ellis, are we ready to start the second part? Yes, we're still recording. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're now going to the second part of our regular session with our new commission. And again, due to the health crisis um, causing us to meet by a video conference, Commissioner Carr and Commissioner uh, Vatiki Orders. It was sworn in by the city clerk in her office yesterday. Congratulations to both of you. I now call to order the regular session meeting of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpur Springs on Tuesday, April 14, 2020 at 6.58 p.m. Ms. Jacobs, roll call, please. Mayor Alahuza. Here. Vice Mayor Tara Penny. Here. Commissioner Carr. Here. Mr. Donovan? Here. Mr. Vatikiotis? Here. We are now going to the public comments of the items that will not be discussed tonight. If anyone has any comments, please come for, uh, please state your name and your address for the record, and you'll be given four minutes. Ms. Jacobs, have we received any emails? We have received no email. Ms. Tellers, do we have anyone that is, who likes to speak? Yes, we do. Moving on the first okay. speaker. Panayoti School Yas, 595 Peninsula Avenue. I want to know, will Saturday night security for Orthodox Easter be addressed? I wanted to make sure there's going to be no extra security for no particular reason when there shouldn't be any if no one's going to be in attendance. Thank you for your comment. Do we have any other comments? Ms. Tellers, do we have any other comments? Sorry, no others at this time. Thank you. We are now going to the presentations. We, items one and two will be handled together. Item number one is Commissioner Carr. It was presented with a name, name badge and of course being that he was um, 
he was already a commission. He has all the other items. Uh, the item number two, which is Commissioner uh, Vatikioris, was presented with the key of the city, with an A badge, a coat patch, a city seal, uh, lapel pen, and a tie pack. So uh, congratulations to both of you. Uh, you. We, are, uh, we are now going to the uh, commission comments. Vice Mayor Terrapani. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Well, I guess we're uh, taking both presentations as one. Yeah. Um, um, yes, if we would, if we want to comment great. for both Commissioner Carr and Commissioner Vatiki Orders. Yeah, I just want to congratulate both commissioners. Uh, it's, I feel like I'm have a unique position in serving with both of you, as as in I grew up with Commissioner Carr on the Bayou, and then the inverse with uh, Commissioner Vatikiotis, uh, his sons, and have fond memories of, of both. So uh, welcome to the board, Commissioner Vatikiotis and uh, Commissioner Carr. Look forward to continue serving with you and uh, look forward to at least uh, two more productive years while I serve on this board with all of you. So congratulations to both and uh, hope we can keep on doing good things. Thank you. Commissioner Carr. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, first, I want to, and Vice Mayor, thank you for the kind words. Um, I want to start off by thanking the, the residents for the opportunity to serve as commissioner for the past three years. It's been an honor um, to serve. It's truly a servant's role to be here and to represent the residents and the business owners of Tarpon Springs. And I also would like to thank you for trusting in me uh, to represent you for another three years. Uh, my hairline has gotten further back since the last time I was sworn in. So uh, there is a little bit of stress and it has aged me just a little bit, but I'm happy to do this. I'm proud to do this. I'm proud to call Tarpon Springs home. Um, I want to touch on a couple things that the board has done and I don't take credit for these individually, but it's as a board uh, support, I believe. And some of the things I want to highlight are just the positive things that we've seen that have gone on over the past three years uh, throughout Tarpon Springs. And one of the things I'm really proud about is to see the removal of the blighted property and the nuisance property of Sunday at the top of the bayou. Um, we've seen multiple beautification projects throughout the city of Tarpon Springs. We've seen improvements with the city's relationships through the different levels of government from the county, state, and federal funding for projects throughout Tarpon Springs. Uh, one thing that we've done is also expanded the scope of state and county projects. And this is done with the collective of the board in, uh, overall. Uh, we've seen additional sidewalk repairs and uh, roadways repaved and additional crosswalks added for pedestrian safety throughout Tarpon Springs. We've seen our county parks improved uh, through, our through our communications and relationships with the county staff. Uh, we've seen the exterior renovation of the cultural center, which is overdue. We've seen many improvements to Sunset Beach. We've seen Little League, uh, the Little League field fully renovated last year. Uh, we've seen historic street signs added to the historic district. We've got updated design uh, gateway signs that are yet to be installed, but they plan on being installed, I believe, in the next year. Um, we've expanded the water line and sewer line replacements. We've added quarterly newsletter. Um, we've added quarterly newsletters to the water bills. We've extended the hospital lease, and then we've also lowered the tax rate. Um, so I just want to say I think it's been a great three years. It's really truly been an honor. Uh, I do look forward to the next three years, and I think there's some uh, goals that we should set as a board, and there's a few things that I would like to encourage the board to look at. One is I believe that we're in desperate need of a parking garage in downtown to serve our businesses and serve our residents and visitors as they visit Tarpon Springs. Um, the second one would be connecting the bayou, uh, the Craig Park uh, walk path out to the um, Sunset Beach. Today, we've got a, a lot of riprap rock that's around South Spring Boulevard. And there's an opportunity, I think, to make a nice trail uh, fully out to uh, Sunset Beach and expand our recreation. Uh, third would be extending uh, Distin and Belcher to Mears. This is an important part, I think, that our community has been asking for for years now that we need to address, I think, sooner than later. It's great to see Mears coming through and it should be completed here in the next couple months. But until we connect Belcher to Mears, we're still gonna have a terrible traffic issues on along Ultra 19. I think another goal would be addressing the raising tides in the sponge docks and throughout the low-lying areas of Tarpon Springs, support expanding recreation along with youth and children's sports, continue communication to our county, state, and federal levels of government for appropriations and federal grants, increase the presence of public art throughout Tarpon Springs, 
and update our current codes for commercial design guidelines. I truly take this on as an honor, and I'm really looking forward to serving all the residents of Tarpon Springs and businesses over the next three years. And I look forward to serving all of you over the next three years as well. Um, Commissioner Vatikiotis, congratulations on your appointment and, and election. Uh, looking forward to serving with you as well over the next three years. Uh, it's an honor to sit with you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, congratulations to Commissioner Carr on getting reelected. It's been a privilege to serve with you this far, and I'm excited for where this board's going to go. And congratulations to Commissioner Vaticiotis. I'm really looking forward to serving with you as well. Thank you. Commissioner Vaticiotis. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just have a <clears throat> couple of comments. I simply wish to thank my wife, Dolly, and my children for encouraging me to run for the commission also wish to thank all of my friends and supporters for getting the word out that helped put me in office. I'm honored to be here and to have their trust. I'm also um, looking forward to working with this current board. I was once uh, told that politics um, is the art of compromise. I hope we all remember that as we work together in making Tarpon Springs better. I know we won't always agree, and, but hopefully the right decision will have been made as a board. I don't have much to say right now about what I wish to do. I would simply prefer to get on with doing. So with that thought, uh, it's back to you, Mayor. Thank you, thank you. I, uh, <clears throat> Commissioner Carr, would like to congratulate you on your reelection. The people have spoken. And we, they, we all confident that you will continue to serve as well the next three years. Congratulations. Also like to thank Susan Hills for her uh, willingness to serve the people of Tarpa Springs. And I'm very happy that she will continue to serve the people of Tarpa Springs on the budget advisory committee. She's doing an excellent job there. Uh, also I'd like to uh, congratulate and to welcome our new board member, uh, Mr. Costas Vaticiotis, Commissioner Costas Vaticiotis, who brings a great deal of experience to the commission. And I wanna congratulate you both and I'm looking forward to work with you, work all of us to work together for the betterment of Tarpa Springs. With that, I'd like to go to uh, Mr. Liqueurs. Do you want to comment? I just want to welcome to the board and uh, looking forward to working with you the next two years. Because we'll have two years as a commission together, so we can get a lot done in two years. Chief Cochin. I just want to congratulate the two new board members, or Jacob, um, on being reelected, and Mr. Vatikiogos for um, serving a term. I look forward to working with you guys and wish you guys the best. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Irene Jacobs, do you want to comment? Uh, yes, please. Uh, Commissioner Carr, I congratulate you on your reelection and look forward to working uh, with you for another three years. Uh, Commissioner Vatikiotis, uh, I congratulate you on your election. And uh, in the past, I've worked with uh, Commissioner Vatikiotis as a building director. And in my tenure, I've also worked with him as a city manager and look forward to working with him as a commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are now going to the public comments. And uh, Ms. Jacobs, do we have any uh, emails? Have we received any emails on this item? We didn't receive no emails. Okay. Ms. Dallas, do we, uh, do we have anyone who is wishing to speak? Anyone wishing to speak on this item, please raise your hand now. We have none. Okay, thank you. Congratulations to both of you. We are now going to the uh, consent agenda. Number three is the award file number 200093NJL, single source purchase of energy recovery at AT1500 turbocharger. And number four is the award file number 200098NJL, single source purchase of AVAC system repair parts. Any of the items that you like to pull? I hear none. Uh, any comments from uh, any commission comments? I hear none. We are going, we're going to the public comments. 
Ms. Jacobs, have we uh, received any emails on this item? We've received no emails. Ms. Ellis, have we, uh, do we have any attendees wishing to speak on this item? Anyone wishing to speak, please raise your hand. We have none. The chair will detain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Vadikiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Vice Mayor Chairpani? Yes. Yeah, who's this? Yes. We are now going to the ordinance and resolution. This is the item number five, resolution 2020-11, election of Vice Mayor. The city attorney will read the title after appointment and prior to the resolution vote. Hi, right, Mr. Attorney. Mayor? Yes. Uh, I would just like to ask for consideration of Vice Mayor. Um, I know this is in no disrespect to Vice Mayor Tara Panny. Uh, I have served the board over the past three years and have been reelected for another three years. And I'm considered the senior commissioner on the board now, and I'd like the consideration from the board um, of Vice Mayor, uh, if you so mo feel moved to. Uh, I think I've worked my um, hardest above and beyond what's asked of me. Um, I know it's a part-time role, but I do re really look at it as a full-time role too. So um, I I'll appreciate everyone that's on the board, but I'd like to ask your consideration during this time. Thank you. We are now going to select the vice mayor. You know, uh, selecting the vice mayor is not the easiest direction, the, the easiest uh, decision. All four commissioners are very good servants and the, every one of them loves the city and the people of Tarper Springs. Um, what I'm gonna be looking for to make, this, to make the uh, recommendation is a commission that it has the most experience to serve as a vice mayor and a commissioner who is always in town and available to serve our citizens uh, as, uh, as I do, I'm always present. So with that, I'd like to go to uh, Commissioner Terrapani to get his opinion on it. Uh, opinion on Vice Mayor? Yes. Um, I mean, I, at the pleasure of the board, I would like to continue to serve as Vice Mayor. Um, other than that, I don't know how much I could weigh in, Mayor. Okay. Commissioner Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, again, thankfully, we haven't really needed the... Uh, the services of a vice mayor so far since I've been on the board. Um, although Vice Mayor Terrapani's leadership has been appreciated. Uh, that being said, I, I really appreciate the way that Commissioner Carr prepares for meetings. I, I think he asks great questions and I would gladly support him for vice mayor. Thank you. I would like to ask a question to uh, Commissioner Carr. Commissioner Carr, one of the uh, uh, things that I, I will looking for is the uh, commissioners is always in town and available to serve our citizens. Do you work in town that you'd be available if, you know, if you get a phone call to come and to cover for me? So from the standpoint, I, I, my occupation is held in Clearwater. Uh, I do take phone calls throughout the day though, um, as I'm able to at work, I'm able to break loose from meetings as well, which I do um, currently. And I make up time uh, at my work after hours or on the weekend when so needed. Um, so I know the staff, I, I reach out to them throughout the, the week, throughout the day. So I am available for meetings if needed. Uh, and I'm happy to uh, serve if needed as well in Tarpon Springs, uh, if there's something that requires me to be there. If we have a ribbon cutting during the day, uh, you'll be able to attend those? No, I can't attend all ribbon cuttings, no. Is that a requirement of Vice Mayor? Well, if I'm not able to make it, then the vice mayor is the one that he, uh, he will cover for the mayor. So I, uh, ribbon cuttings, or is it something I could- uh, I'm just, I'm giving you that as an example. Sure. Okay. Honestly, I think both of you, uh, Commissioner Terrapani and yourself, Commissioner Carr, I think both of you are very well qualified. I like both of you. The, you both are very responsible uh, commissioners, and I wish I can have two instead of one, uh, two commissioners. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for uh, 
a motion. Uh, Ma Mayor, we didn't receive um, any comments from Commissioner Vitikiotis. I don't think oh, he that's had... right. I'm so sorry. You're right. Mayor, I was actually hoping you'd forget all together because this is a tough issue to discuss. I like both uh, Commissioner Chirapani and Commissioner Carr. I think both of them are equally um, qualified to be vice mayor. Uh, I understand where you're coming from. You do an excellent job and you're, you're almost at everything that is scheduled on the calendar representing the city. So you do a wonderful job in that regard. And I appreciate your, um, uh, your interest in having someone available in, in the circumstance that you're not there. Um, I, I think whatever your preference is going to be mayor is the way I would go. I think historically, and it's been done with a mayor taking the lead on who he'd like, uh, as vice mayor, so I, I really don't have anything more to offer than that. Um, thank you. Thank you. Well, as I said earlier, I, I think uh, both commissioners are very well qualified to me. They're very well responsible and very knowledgeable. So I will uh, recommend Commissioner Carr, being that Commissioner Terrapeni already has served twice as a, as a vice mayor. So uh, Commissioner Carr ha will have the opportunity to serve as well. Thanks. I need uh, a motion. Motion to appoint Commissioner Carr as Vice Mayor. A second. Commissioner Vatikiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Mayor Lewis? Yes. City Attorney? You want to read the resolution now? Yes, I, I would. Resolution 2020-11, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, appointing Commissioner Jacob Carr as Vice Mayor of the City of Tarpon Springs and providing for an effective date hereof. That was the reading of resolution 2020-11 by title only. Mayor? Yes. I just want to say uh, thank you for the consideration and thank you for the board uh, for your support and Vice Mayor Terry Paney, uh, thank you for your support over the past year and uh, your support as Vice Mayor this time around. Yeah, I think, uh, and again, I want to thank uh, Commissioner Terry Paney. Uh, he did an excellent job as a Vice Mayor twice working with me uh, and uh, I mean, I couldn't ask for any better. So. Uh, I'm sure you'll be just as good. And uh, I think uh, Commissioner Terrapan will be there helping you if we need, you know, if you can't make it or for some reason we need a, another person. Thank you. Um, we already voted, right? No, we did not. We did not? Okay. We need a motion to approve the resolution. Motion to approve the resolution. So moved. Second, we need a second. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Vatican. Yes. Commissioner Donovan. Yes. Commissioner Terrapani. Yes. Vice Mayor Carr. Yes. Marilyn Hitzis. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we are now going to uh, the public comments. Do we have any emails? We received no emails. Ms. Dallas. Do we have any attendees wishing to speak on this item? Anyone wishing to speak, please raise your hand. We have none. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ellis, I didn't hear you. Did you say yes? I'm sorry, we have none. Okay, thank you. We are now going to. Uh, Resolution 2020-15, verification of uh, Executive Order 2020-07, extended state of emergency through April 21st, 2020. City Attorney, if you please read the resolution. Resolution 2020-15, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, ratifying Executive Order 2020-07 and extending the declaration of local state of emergency to April 21, 2020, 
and providing for an effective date hereof. That was the rating of resolution 2020-15 by title only. Thank you. Are there any commission comments on this item? Public comments? Ms. Jacobs, have we got any emails on this item? We've seen no emails. Ms. Tellers, do we have anyone that wishes to speak on this item? We do, bring in the first speaker now. On Ayotte School Yas, 595 Peninsula Avenue. I just want to address since the it's been extended the state of emergency in Tarpon Springs which overlaps Orthodox Easter. Are there any we're requesting that there be no security detail for Orthodox Easter that we save the taxpayer money and not have any helicopters fly over or anything like that. There will be no um, there will be no patrons over there for the service. And what does the city manager or the chief have a, a course of action to not have any security detail orthodoxy. Thank you. Do we have any other comments? We have none at this time. Thank you. The chair will detain a motion. I, I'd no. like to make a comment, Mayor. Sure, go ahead. Uh, just to clear up any confusion, Mr. City Manager, is there any security detail or anything in place for Orthodox Easter? I don't believe so. There's not going to be uh, for the gathering because of the governor's order, there's not going to be anything outside that security for. Commissioner okay. Donovan, the uh, St. Nicholas Church, they're, they're conducting the service, but it's only the priest and uh, one or two people helping the priest and everybody's watching it online. Nobody, no one is allowed inside the church. That's what I thought. I just wanted to address the yeah. citizen concern. So I'm, I'm And actually, Father of Father Haros sent emails to uh, every parishioner of St. Nicholas. So all the ones, the member of the church, they should know about that. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Vatikiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapenny? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. <laughs> yes, thank you. We are now going to the item number seven, which is the appointment of uh, Commissioner to uh, Forward Panelas. This is for replacement of Vice Mayor Terrapenny as he was representing the board for Tarpa Springs, Safety Harbor, and Old Smart. The board meets uh, on the second Wednesday each month, and um, we received an email from Commissioner Donovan expressing for the second time, the strong, his strong interest serving on the forward panelists to represent the city of Tarpa Springs, Safety Harbor, and Osmore. I believe uh, Commissioner Donovan will do a great job representing the three cities, and I will support his appointment. Uh, Commission comments, Vice Mayor Carr. Thanks, Mayor. Um, Commissioner Terrapani, I want to say thank you for serving on this board for the past year. I know uh, serving on county boards is a difficult uh, thing to juggle at times with running a business, um, having a growing family, and serving as a commissioner as well. Uh, so I want to thank you for your service um, and your time that you've dedicated to this board down in the county and representing Tarpon Springs. Uh, I also would support uh, Commissioner Donovan to fill this role. I think you'd be a great asset uh, to the three cities, and I think you'd be a great voice for Tarpon Springs. Um, representing the city uh, at Ford Pinellas. This is a, a board that uh, allocates a significant amount of funds uh, through grants um, throughout the county. And I think it'd be great to have a, um, I think you do a great job uh, voicing the need for uh, those funds to come up to Tarpon Springs. Thank you. Commissioner Terrapani. I don't have uh, any issues support supporting Commissioner Donovan in this role. I think he'd be good for it. Uh, it was, uh, it was a great experience for me. I wish I would have, would have been able to uh, contribute more, um, but sometimes it can be tough to, to leave town with on the daily basis with uh, what all we have going on. So uh, happy to support Commissioner Donovan in this role. Commissioner Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor, and thank you everybody for your kind words of support. Um, and thank you, Commissioner Terrapani, for your last year's service. Commissioner Vaticuris. Thank you, Mayor. I wish to thank uh, Commissioner Terrapani for the last uh, two years, I believe, that he's been on, or actually one year that he's been on the uh, representing the city. And also, I thank uh, Commissioner Donovan, 
Donovan would be an excellent choice. Um, I do want to confirm, and I believe the city manager can do this, that uh, our term is, uh, our, it's a shared seat. So our term for hosting that seat expires in January, 2021. I believe that's the case. Um, Mayor, uh, can Mr. LaCourse respond to that just for the purpose of everybody's information? Yeah, I believe that's correct. I, that our two year term would end uh, somewhere around that time. Right, so yeah. we've got eight, eight meetings left, Commissioner Donovan, and I wish you all the best for putting those to the best use. Um, I know next week we're gonna have a work session. I believe that's still planned, and, and I, there's a couple of projects that I'd like to uh, float uh, for your consideration to take to the Ford Pinellas uh, meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Terrapenny, uh, thank you for uh, serving on this board, which is so, so important to our uh, economic development. And, uh, and I want to thank uh, Commission Donovan for accepting this uh, appointment to, uh, to represent not only the city of Topper Springs, but Safety Harbor and Osmond as well. Thank you. We are now going to uh, public comments. Ms. Jacobs, do we have any emails? We received no emails. Ms. Ellis, do we have any attendees wishing to speak on this item? time we have none thank you the chair will detain a motion make a motion to appoint commissioner donovan to the ford Pinellas board until the term expires second roll call commissioner Vatagiotis? yes commissioner donovan yes commissioner terpenny yes vice mayor carr Yes. Mayor Lahuzis. Yes, thank you. We are now going to item number eight, which is the appointment of commissioner to a general employee pension board. Um, this is for replacement of former commissioner Sieber as a representative of the board. The board meets quarterly. Um, are there any um, commission comments? Commissioner uh, Vatikiora, so you'll be interested to serve on this board. Sure, Mayor, that'd be fun. Thank you. Uh, are there any commission comments? Yeah, Mayor, I just want to know when the board meets. I, I know you said quarterly, but is it at nighttime? Is it a, is it a predetermined date? They are, I know they're serving during the day. I'm, I'm not exactly, I don't know exactly what day that is, but it's during the day. Okay, I was just curious. Yeah, I used to serve on this board, that's how I know. <laughs> Mr. Likuris, do you know when do they meet? Is it a certain day or they just announce it as they uh, become available? Well, I'm not sure, maybe the city clerk, do you remember? Yes, um, it's quarterly and uh, the day, and it's usually around 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, but the day would depend on when they can call me. Okay. Commission comments? Commi Vice Mayor Carr. Uh, I think uh, Commissioner Vatikotis is a great uh, fit for this board with his experience as a past city manager and uh, city employee. I uh, support um, him filling this role. Commissioner Terrapani. Works for me. Okay. Commissioner Dime, do you have any other comments? No comments from me, Mayor. Thank you. Commissioner Tikiores, you'll probably attend in there where you were city manager, right? I don't believe so, Mayor. I think uh, we normally have the human uh, resources. Human resources, the HR guy. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Do you uh, do you want to comment? No, I, I'd be happy to accept the position. I think it's an excellent board. I always like to stay close to how things are with our employees. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I, I think I, I enjoyed it when I, uh, I served, when I was a commissioner. Um, it, it is interesting to see how uh, actually they invest in the, you know, the, uh, the funds there. So uh, we are now going to the uh, public comments on this item. Ms. Jacobs, any emails? We received no emails. Mr. Ellis, do we have anyone who likes to speak? Anyone wishing to speak, please raise your hand at this time. We have none. 
The chair will detain a motion. Motion to appoint Commissioner Viticiotis to the General Employees Pension Board. Second. And roll call. Commissioner Viticiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapenny? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lahuzis? Yes, thank you. We are now going to the item number nine, which is an update, small business endurance grant staff report, Mr. Liqueurs. Yes, uh, all I can say is wow on this grant. Um, I'm sorry for the lateness in sending you the information, but we were working on it right into up until five today. And obviously, um, if you looked at it and saw the bottom, um, we've had to go through um, you know, 212, we got 212 applications in. So what I wanna talk about first before I get to the money is uh, the second portion of it, the eligibility. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the first screening pro project um, that we sat down and screened these applications and the intent that we thought we had with these grants. And then we need to talk about what your intent with these grants were so we can look at this and see what our real numbers are and what it looks like and then make a decision of how much money we want to put towards it. Right now, the numbers in the first go round of review, and again, this is an ongoing process, and uh, again, we just finished the review, a re-review, and then a look at those facts, got these numbers ready for you, and you know we're ready tomorrow morning to start the process of these and at least get the first batch of checks out on Friday. Uh, we'll be completing all the processes and hopefully getting the second batch of checks out the next Friday. Um, right now, the process where we are is 87 applications that are approved, complete, and meet the intent um, that we had for the criteria, which I sent to you. Um, and they've been reviewed and we got 87 of those that are really check ready right now for sure. We have 21 applications that met all the criteria, but they've got issues with their bu business tax license. And we'll have to do a process. And with 21, we'll have to work with them. They won't be in this first batch of checks, but you know, we know when their eligibility was, we know when they got in. So we need to work with these. Some of them are a rather long time. And we probably should have looked at that if we were gonna if we were gonna go off the standard, if you had to have one, to probably have a time frame because some of these go three, four, five years, and some have never got one. So we've got a wide range of those things from some that are just late, but there's 21 of those that we gotta, we gotta um, get set to see if they can get themselves up to date on it. So if you look at those two figures, there's 108 uh, in the pipeline right now. Now, the category that we need to talk about, and we talk, need to talk about the interpretation of the grant, is the applications in these first go-arounds that we said were not eligible. Um, obviously, there were some, surprisingly, there were some duplicate applicants. I, I don't know if they wanted to make sure their application got in the first time, but they sent some duplicates in. Those are easy. We know those don't apply. In the number of 17, there's also ones that are not located in the city limits. Very easy. Uh, they don't apply. Um, the home-based businesses, despite what it said on, on the application, home-based businesses put in and, and they're not applicable. I don't quite know if I'd have a little more time. I'd have tried to look out of those 70s, how many are those that there's no question on. I would say maybe 15 or 20 of those are like that. So there may be 50 that we need to talk about in this next category. And that's the category that when we reviewed them, we looked at the standards of the grant where we talked about um, restaurants, retail, um, the front facing businesses. But the second criteria we looked at and it's, and it's said in the application referred to the governor's order, the county's order. Um, we looked at which ones uh, were, were deemed non-essential businesses and they were actually closed by the act. And if they weren't, if they were still an essential business and they were left to be open, uh, we didn't put them into that category. 
Now this goes a wide range of, th of, of places. These are developers, these are construction people, these are the trades, plumbers, um, plumbers, electricians, um, and a lot of other ones in that thing. If the intent of the, of the grant and your intent when you approved it was not to draw the line at the, at the criteria which you see on the sheet of all the businesses that were closed and deemed non-essential by the governor and therefore were closed down, if, if it was your intention to expand it to any place, whether there were businesses that, you could, that citizens could walk in, which we talked about public facing businesses mostly, like retail and restaurant business, the public goes in, goes out. Um, if that's expanded, then we could have as many as 50 or more of these people um, that may be eligible. Now, some of them, some of them are question marks, like one I know put in four, four different ones for different business. Obviously, only one of those four would qualify. That's why I'm thinking the number's more in the 45, 50 range. I may be but, but we have to contend with those, what we really meant by it, and does the people still, for instance, the tax preparation office, which wasn't closed by the governor's order, the county order, they're deemed essential, they're still to operate, um, you know, would they be eligible? Because obviously every business, no matter essential or non-essential, there's probably some effect to, would that be one that in your mind, there's a local business that meet the other criteria that should be in there? Um, a construction company, no public goes to it, they go out and do construction projects. Um, would that be one that you would say that you intended to be in this grant? Um, why we have to look at those is if that number is about 50, that would bring our numbers up to close to 150-ish. I originally said I was thinking of asking for 50 more thousand dollars, but obviously if those were added in and the criteria was expanded a little bit, we meet that 150 now and we've still got as of as of today there's 34 applications that we haven't gone through on the face of it we see some of those that are businesses that are not in the city we see some you know we see some of the disqualifications of that one so it's going to be less than the 34 but now we're talking about even if we stop the application project you know the application process a little earlier um you know we're dealing with probably up to another you know needing total 175 thousand. so what's going to be important is you as a commission determine the criteria and if we were too strict by just doing the non-essential if if your intent was to expand it to those businesses that are essential and they're a tarpon business they're even though they're essential to expand to them then that's going to fluctuate on how much money or or if you just want to do a cutoff the first one's in first one's going um and the total is 150 you want to add 50,000 more or 60,000 more then we just go in the order of when they come in and and stop at that point so that's something you have to discuss and give us direction so when we go back to the review process first thing tomorrow morning um we can uh, adhere to the board's wishes on that And again, Mr. LeCure, as you say, that uh, the criteria that you use is the uh, based on the uh, governor's executive order and based on the uh, Pinellas County Board um, and Commissioner's order, executive order. So that's yep. exactly what that's exactly how we all voted to do uh, to do to go by. And to me. Uh, we need to stay with the criteria that we started because if you change the criteria, some people they already, you know, they already didn't apply for it because they think, hey, we already know what the uh, requirements are. I mean, we can't change the rules in the middle of, uh, of the process, in my opinion. Vice Mayor Carr, what's your opinion on that? Thanks, Mayor. Um, Mark, I just want to I want to touch base on something else real quick before I jump into that. Um, okay. Is every business being reached out to that doesn't qualify or will not receive a check from the grant? Have they been someone discussing with that or calling the applicant to let them know? 
Not yet because we haven't made a final decision on that. That's why Friday when we did the agenda, I put the qualifications on there because I didn't want to get to the point until I went over with this board again what your expectations of qualifications are. That's one of the things we'll do tomorrow once you set those criteria. But, but right now they're okay. just non-eligible in the process we have now. If you tell me your interpretation or what you expected from us is different, um, then those, you know, some of those businesses may go on, go on the other list. So we're, we're okay. kind of waiting for you. No one's eliminated yet. That's just in the first process of looking at them, um, the numbers. I understand. Um, what about a letter with a check uh, that's being sent to the businesses? Is there like a letter that's, that's coming from the city, maybe you or Karen Lemons at States, or maybe it comes from the mayor's office, I don't know, or maybe we all sign one, I'm not sure. Um, that just states, we appreciate you as a business owner in Tarpon Springs. Thank you for choosing Tarpon Springs to have your business. Uh, this is the best way for us to support you during this hard time. I uh, hope it gets uh, you past this month or something along those lines. Have we talked about that internally? Um, no, but we, we'd, be, we'd be glad to do it. And, and we could do that and have that ready for when the first batch of checks goes out Friday morning. Okay. I think it would be a good idea if we could all even sign uh, not sign 100, 100 plus letters, but to have something um, that either comes from the mayor or it's a copy of our signature, just something on there, just letting them know that we really value them as a business here in Tarpon Springs, um, other than just giving them a check. I, I think it's a great idea, but I don't, as a copy, really doesn't really, it's not personal. I think okay. it's, it's good if we sign each one separate, individual. I don't mind if I sign them all. I think it's better. It will be more, it makes more, uh, it's more personal if you sign each one of them separate. Okay. Yeah. Just uh, remember, Mayor, we're trying to get them out first thing Friday morning. Well, you know, uh, uh, I usually work 24 hours. It doesn't matter to me. You know that. Uh, Mark, there are some restaurants that haven't, they haven't applied for it. You and I will discuss that. Uh, What's the best way to go and reach out to those people? Some of the owners, an example that I want to share with you, the uh, owner, she's in Chicago, and, and, and that was the um, Andrews restaurant. Uh, she hasn't applied for it. I don't know if she knows that. How can we actually reach out to those people knowing that they are qualifying for it? I guess we just need to know the information of how to get a hold of those people. Yeah. That one might be hard unless Somebody's got a number for her in Chicago. Well, the restaurant, I think, I, I don't know if the restaurant is open. I don't know if they're selling, you know, food to go or not. But uh, I know that she's not here, and she probably got stuck in Chicago. I'm just giving you that as an example. So if we can find out uh, other, other businesses that, you know, they're eligible, they're qualifying for the grant, and we haven't, been, we haven't got any applications, if we can reach out to them. Do you have a way that we can do that? It, it's just going to be very hard to put that obligation on us um, to do that because we're going to miss some of them. And it's just going to be very, I mean, we can make an attempt, but we cannot guarantee you, um, again, with all we're doing the process, these grants, that we'd be able to find everyone um, that hadn't applied and be able to find them and notify them um, in a timely manner. I, I, I just don't know if I can guarantee that. Hmm. But I can, we can try. Okay. But again, we're going to leave people out. There's going to be people we don't identify. And, uh, you know, I just don't want it to come back. Oh, you know, you didn't do that one and stuff. They're just going to be impossible. Yeah. Commission Terrapani. Can't hear you. You. What exactly is the question, Mayor? I mean, to re-review the eligibility of the people who are have already yeah. submitted? Yes. I wouldn't be in favor of redoing the eligibility requirements. I thought that they were pretty cut and dry and straightforward when we voted on this last week. I mean, the other part of the discussion is the potential need for more uh, funding, which I'm open to discussing. Um, you know, I don't have any issue with that, assuming that, you know, there's a funding source that we all feel comfortable with utilizing and then also, uh, you know, making sure that 
the, I guess from what I saw, I guess 87 people have already been deemed eligible. Is that right, Mark? Yes. And then there was, you know, X amount of more people, which somewhat you're predicting the full hundred is going to get utilized without a doubt. And yes. you're, you're potentially asking for another 50 to uh, give out to existing eligible uh, businesses or I say existing eligible, but I mean, businesses who are eligible through the existing criteria. Yes. So what was the, I guess we were trying to determine whether or not we would need to establish more eligibility? Well, I think the question is the, the interpretation of was our interpretation. And again, we went a lot on the Portland grant and looked at it. And the interpretation of when we said the governor, it says in the grant about the governor's order and stuff, mm -hmm. um, were you intending that businesses that were deemed essential, their business in the town, but they're deemed in essential, um, would those businesses or businesses like a construction firm or a developer group or a doctor's office, um, you know, would were you, was your intention that those businesses would be on there too? We just did the ones that were not eligible and closed uh, by the order. And that was our intent in doing it. But again, in our communication and doing this with you as, as commissioners, I just want to make you, you understand when you see the list um, of ones we, we did not approve that it maybe was your intent that some of those tarpon businesses should have got the money. So I just want to make sure before we make you know, the more final decisions on these, uh, what your intention was uh, as a commissioner and in, in our communication process. So when we review them. I mean, as you can see, it's been less than a week and you've already had 87 eligible people fulfill, you know, whatever requirements there are to obtain the money that have been approved. So I think using the standard that going by the governor's order versus essential versus non-essential is, you know, pretty, pretty cut and dry. Um, and we're already seeing that 87 people are, are eligible. So I don't think that you can open the, the gate more to include the quote unquote essential businesses being eligible as well. I think the intent from our original discussion was to basically make it for the businesses that have been affected by, you know, not only the, the whole COVID crisis, but ultimately the governor's uh, quote unquote mandate. So I, I'm, I'm good with the, our original intent. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioner Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. And again, I just want to thank the board and staff for working so hard on this grant. Obviously, um, you know, it's been flying off the shelf so far, so I'm happy with where we're at. Uh, I think to clarify, as far as the criteria stuff goes, I don't think it's about changing any criteria. There's no changes being made. I think our city manager is just asking us for our interpretation on the criteria that's there. Um, I mean, for, for example, I, I interpreted the grant to be meant to help all businesses affected by coronavirus. Um, frankly, I think this is something that our city's doing, going above and beyond uh, what the state and county are ordering and doing. So I really don't care what state or county list they're on. I think if they're inside Tarpon Springs and they meet the grant requirements and they need, they need help, then they should get it. Um, so I'm fine whether the business is listed as non-essential or essential. If they need help and they're being affected by coronavirus, I'm fine to include them in the grant. Um, but again, if, if the rest of the, the board feels otherwise and wants to keep it the way it is, I think, you know, obviously we've helped 87 so far, so I'm fine to continue down that path. Um, but just as far as my interpretation goes, I think it was meant to help all businesses affected by coronavirus. Um, whether you're on the essential side or non-essential side, I think, you know, this grant is there to help businesses in Turpin Springs regardless. So, um, I, I'd be willing to open it up to essential and non-essential. Commission in Vaticuris. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I do have a couple of questions. Um, uh, and I understand what the discussion has been. Have any of the applicants been rejected because they were essential businesses and the staff didn't feel that that qualified them for the grant? Yes, on the, on the list you're talking about, if they were not if they were not on the non-essential um, from the governor that we had for you or what was listed um, in the beginning of the grant, 
um, which talked about restaurants, retail, gyms, and other things. If they weren't in that category or the non-essential list, then they were put in that file. They haven't been rejected yet, but right now they are sitting in that file. Um, before we finalize it, we wanted to come to you to make sure on the interpretation as a board. So, um, city manager, that would be an addition to the 34 that are pending review. In other words, there's, uh, uh, I, I'm not sure how to read the statistics that you've given us as you just described them, but we've got 87 that are complete and approved. Um, we've got some pending business license questions and then applications that are not, not eligible that are 70. Those that are essential businesses are within that group of 70 Yes, and I would say there's probably 45 to 50. Um, obviously, it covers four different categories. Duplicates, there were people that put in two applications for the same business. Um, right. There's also ones that are not located in the city limits. Um, and there's also home-based ones, which we specifically said no home-based businesses. So I'm estimating 45 to 50 um, essential businesses that are in there, in that list. That's that's where you're getting your number of 50 from that you discussed earlier. Okay. Yes. Just uh, and, um, the other thing, um, those have, has there been any businesses license business businesses that have actually gone back and obtained their license and then qualified or you haven't experienced that yet. Do you know? I think there's one. I think there's one or two that right at the beginning of the process, the first day, they went in and paid. Again, some of them are just due from 2019, and they're only you know six months due. Mm -hmm. um, but the majority of ones on the list are sometimes one, two, three, four, or or more. And there's going to have to be some figure. You know, buildings. The building division is going to have to do some figuring you know on what those payments are and stuff so a couple ones have been done that were real easy they just hadn't paid you know they were six months behind and hadn't caught up and those were easy ones to go in and and, and do, um, do with think... the remainder of 20 ones that there's got to be a process and they're gonna have to go in and pay um but i anticipate most of those will be able to there may be some that can't because i think one of them will pay more in occupational license than probably what the thousand dollar award in because they've been so long not having one so i don't know what the exact number that 21 is going to be but you know if they all were we'd have 108 from the 87 approved and the 21 were there we'd, we'd be at the 108 mark part of that process uh involving the build building department would actually go out and physically confirm that they exist is that right that's yes. part yes. of the okay that's a good point and um in addition to the uh, eligibility interpretation that you're looking for, there's some question, I believe I saw somewhere on extending the deadline. Is that right? You, didn't, you haven't mentioned that from the 23rd or I'm sorry. Uh, well, I was, I was really cutting down the deadline because depending how much you want to want to dedicate, um, you know, we're going to be way, be how much money you dedicate, you can see we could have up to 100 50 to 175, depending on those, we could have those right now. So obviously another week of keeping the application open wouldn't make much sense if there, you know, if the, if the money in it is, you know, it's going to be gone by then. So I was saying of shortening the time um, as soon as to give a couple more days notice until uh, 12 noon on Friday. So we could begin the final process of that's what I was asking for possibly moving that deadline um, up to this Friday, 12 noon. Um, can you, uh, on, on that note, what, what is the status of the countywide grant program? Have, are they moving forward with that? They're in talks, right? We're, we're, we're ready to, to be in there. They're developing it now. And hopefully, you know, it's gonna be another, it's gonna be another plus for our businesses and maybe even into the essential, it may be a chance for the essential essential businesses, depending on what their criteria is going to be for the grant, but they're in the process of internally developing it now. So we are going to be, we are be, going to be monitoring and get that information to you and something with the citizens as they develop it, but it's in the development process right now by the county. They, the, you don't see anything where they would uh, preclude 
uh, city, one of our city businesses from applying because they've already received our uh, insurance grant? Have you seen anything would, for that? I would hope not, and we would strongly object to that. You'll, you'll stay on top of that, right? Yes, okay. we would strongly object to that. All right. Um, I, I'm apt to uh, keep the interpretation. I, I think um, there, there's two ways to go about it. One, um, the first cut is whether they're essential or non-essential. And after that cut, for example, the non-essential businesses that are the most widely affected, they still have to provide information to demonstrate that they qualify, whatever our guidelines were with payroll and things of that nature. So that's a that's a, a, another set of hurdles that they have to go through, not just that they're not essential. Um, Mary, I, I know you kind of led the charge uh, in terms of um, of um, extending this to all businesses, regardless. And I'm not sure how you still feel about that. I know. Uh, Commissioner Donovan initiated the program, and, and I think he's very flexible with regard to how we would go. Um, I'm just, I, I'm just, um, uh, I'm a little concerned about dedicating too many funds, um, and then the countywide program kicks in, which if it goes according to the way St. Petersburg does, it's going to be a $5,000 grant, I believe. Um, I might be wrong about that, but they, they were saying that they were copying basically St. Petersburg's uh, plan. Um, I'm, I'm would like to listen to the other commissioners. I'm more inclined at this point to stay with how we originally interpreted um, the guidelines as non-essential businesses, but I, I'd like to hear whatever uh, other commissioners have to say in that regard. Also, um, the date extension, I think Friday honestly is an awkward date I think, um, I mean, that would be okay from the staff accepting applications, but certainly um, from the standpoint of the commissioner getting, the commission getting involved again, that's just not gonna happen until the next work session is the 21st. And then after that, I guess the re next regular session is the 28th. And so I guess whatever we decide tonight is, is, is I understand just from the standpoint of common sense that whatever we do tonight as far as a, a deadline is gonna be it for the grant program. Is that correct, uh, city manager? Yes, I, but again, you, you know, it could always be extended or opened again, but, but yes, I mean, it, right we, now it's, it's expected to go through next week, Wednesday or Thursday next week. I think it ends Thursday next week. I'm just saying with the amount of applications, um, we probably, need to try to end it sooner because we may have enough depending on the money you're going to allocate Absolutely. you know we're going to have that in now and it's going to be a, a cutoff um by when you submit it of who gets the grant and who doesn't get the grant okay well i'll i'll take your lead on it i i don't know what the original intent was with i know it was a hundred thousand dollars i know there were a couple of commissioners the mayor uh, expressed interest to continue expanding the program i just would like to see what the majority of the board members are actually uh, inclined to do at this point before we take a formal vote. Mayor, back to you. Yes, uh, what I had um, uh, stated the last time was that uh, uh, <clears throat> I am in favor to provide additional funding uh, to make sure that all the uh, eligible uh, businesses will receive the grant. Because I thought from the very beginning that $100,000 was not enough. We had more businesses than $100,000 when I cover that. And I guess I was right. Uh, the other thing is we want to, uh, and I agree with uh, Commissioner Terpani, we ought to keep the same, uh, uh, this, you know, the same uh, uh, criteria, the same rules. You just can't go in the middle of the, uh, of the, uh, the game and just change the rules. You got to keep it the same way, how, how it is. Um, I do not agree that uh, to have a cutoff day on Friday, I think we, we said it two weeks. We need to stay with that with two weeks. Um, that's what I wanted to see. Vice Mayor Carr. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I, I agree we need to keep the cutoff date um, sometime next week on the, initial, on the original date. 
Uh, I do have a question though for clarification, Mark. Uh, when I was looking at the email from Karen that you forwarded to us, um, it talked about the applications, one being a business uh, public facing, and I don't have the original paperwork that we looked at to approve, um, but is it in the grant itself, and I don't recall off the top of my head, where it talks about non-essential businesses, is it listed in the grant? That is what we talked about, and that's where the interpretation comes in. When we talked about the public facing businesses, we put, and those affected by the governor's order counting, and our intent by saying that was, was the non-essential grant portion of that was our intention in doing it um but again okay. there's some interpretation from some of the board that might but that was our interpretation when we said those affected by the governor's orders we meant the ones by the governor's orders that had to close down because they were not essential got it okay i mean at the end of the day i think 95 percent of all businesses are affected even the ones that were considered essential but the difference is essential businesses could still be open today and still bring in revenue. The non-essential businesses, they really can't bring in revenue at all unless it's online or at a reduced um, staffing or something along those lines. So based on what we approved last time, uh, I think we need to stand with that and not change any of the requirements um, overall. I, do I acknowledge that yes, other the essential businesses are still impacted? Absolutely, unless you're a grocery store um, or a home improvement store, they, they seem to be, their parking lots are packed. But um, other than that, yeah, the essential businesses are, are still impacted. But at the end of the day, I think what the discussion was and what we all agreed upon was actually the non-essential businesses that we were helping out. Uh, do I want to help out the essential businesses as well? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know what the consensus is right now. I think uh, Commissioner uh, Terrapani wanted to keep it the way it is. Uh, Vice Mayor Carr wants to keep it the way it is. I do. I'm not really sure about uh, Commissioner Donovan and uh, Commissioner Vatikiotis. Would you please uh, yeah, the same, explain the same here. if you stayed the same? Uh, this is Commissioner Vatikiotis. Yes, Mayor, the same. Uh, okay. So, the, so that leaves uh, Commissioner uh, Donovan. Uh, yeah, Mayor, no. I, I interpreted it originally as including essential businesses as well. I thought it was just any business in Tarpon Springs that was affected by coronavirus. Again, I'm fine if that's the trend of the board um, to exclude essential businesses. However, one thing I really want to emphasize to staff is that if we're going to exclude a central business and we're going to reject their applications before we make that decision, I think it'd be really prudent to reach out to those businesses and say, hey, what classification are you? Are you essential or not essential? Because it's easy for staff to look at the governor's orders and say, hey, this is essential, this is not essential. Okay, this store is a blank. However, there was a lot of mixed interpretations and stores looking around when the order came down saying, hey, I'm essential or hey, I'm not essential because I fit into multiple categories. I do multiple things. So I think what, what we really should impress upon staff is that before we reject somebody for being essential, we make sure there's some communication with them to verify that they are considered essential. So maybe even just a simple email or a simple phone call to say, hey, you are considered essential, correct? And allow them to answer yes or no. Because I, I think a lot of businesses were confused about where they stood and whether or not they met you know, multiple classifications. I just really wanna be sure that we don't exclude somebody for being essential. And then it turns out later that, hey, we were non-essential, but oh, by the way, funding's used up now. So I just, to avoid all that, I, I really think it'd be wise if we told staff to say, hey, if you're gonna reject somebody for being an essential business, make sure you clarify and verify that they are an essential business. Yeah, when we ran out of time today, that was our discussion as to how we give the business another opportunity I don't like saying reject, but the ones that we say do not meet the qualifications, we had talked about some kind of, not an appeal, but like an appeal that we would notify them than ours, but do you have anything you want to say to change our mind that you are the other, almost a chance to, you know, we, we deem you this way, but is there any evidence, anything you want to present us that you don't agree with that and you should be in that category there and give them at least the opportunity to, to say it? I, I know we got some places that were even worried because part of their business is not essential is closed down. For instance, the marinas. Marinas are still essential and they're an essential business still, but part of a marina's business and some marinas, a lot of their business is both rental stuff like that. And that's been 
that's been closed down by the governor's orders. So there's even those that were still weighing back and forth. If half of their business was closed because of that, then is the benefit of the doubt go to them and go. So that would be something in the in appeal. Yeah, I'm a business that was, but half of my business and half of my revenue is closed down by the part of our business that's the governor's order. And that's some information they can give us to maybe say, well, because of that, I think it's the intent of the board, you know, you know, if, if half of your business was that and was closed down, even though your business of the other, you know, doing other things that is still essential, um, you know, there may be some of those things where they provide us something and it'll give us another look for analysis. I mean, some clear cut like doctors, I mean, they aren't on the list. Um, you know, doctors are open, they're essential. Um, I don't know what a doctor would dispute, but, but we had talked about some form of letting the people know that they didn't meet, meet um, what we had for the criteria of the grant and a chance to, to convince us that we didn't make the right decision and they are, to give them that opportunity before they are absolutely, you're on the, on the no list. So, so do we have consensus from the board just to make that clear for staff that, I, hey. I think so, we got four. Uh, you, you had, you know, a little twist to it, but uh, I think we had four uh, commissioner, uh, we had four board members that, that we agreed to keep it just the way it is. I, I'm, I'm fine with that, but I, I just wanted to see if, if the other commissioners and mayor and vice mayor would be okay with telling staff that we need to at least give the businesses a heads up and a chance to say whether they're essential or non-essential in their own eyes. Mayor, if I, if I may. Sure, go ahead. Um, I think Mark brought up something that I wasn't necessarily thinking about. If the business has a partial essential business and the business has a partial non-essential business, uh, that's a gray area. Um, I'm not sure if the city attorney could chime in on that one. Um, I mean, my recommendation was if, there's, if the business has any part that's essential business that was shut down, I would think that they would qualify. Um, now, if they have a I'm sorry, non, non-essential business that they're required to shut down that they would qualify. Now, if they have a 25% of essential if they're still able to run part of their business, that's, that's great, right? So I would support that those businesses would qualify still uh, because they do have a non-essential business, but I would, I would lean to our attorney and ask for some clarification on that one. And also, um, I mean, any communication that we can do to the businesses that don't qualify for the grant, um, it, I think Commissioner Vatikiotis, before he was uh, sworn in, brought up a point of saying the, um, the business license may say one thing, but they actually are a completely different thing. Um, I think the breweries were an example uh, that he used. So as long as the city staff, uh, which I really appreciate all the work that they're doing, um, is validating that it's truly a XYZ that it's listed on their um, business licensure. Mr. Trask, I think it was asking you, Mr. Trask, it was asking your opinion on that. Yeah, so every, every one of the applications is going to be fact-based. And so we're going to need to look at the applications, look at the, um, what is provided to us in the applications, and frankly, make that decision um, based upon each individual case. I, I don't know if there is an answer that I can give you that it would make you feel comfortable um, not knowing, you know, each particular case. Um, but as for what's essential and what's not essential, I would rely on black and white reading of the governor's executive orders and not try to put any interpretation of those executive orders and just read them exactly the way that they are. Um, but I'd be happy to work with the city manager and his staff if they have questions as to what my thoughts are relative to, is it essential or non-essential? Okay. Commissioner Tikir, you had a comment? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to point out, we, I think at some point there's gonna be uh, a discussion of increasing the amount by 50,000. Yeah, 000. I think that's next, that's next. Okay, we wanna, I'll wait. I'll wait right now, that. we wanna make sure uh, we uh, agree with the criteria. You know, we have consensus on that, that we're gonna move into the, uh, to the funding. All right, thank you. Commissioner Donovan, you were about ready to say something. 
Yeah, th thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to say that I agree with Vice Mayor Carr uh, as far as a partial uh, essential and non-essential goes. I think if, if part of my business is non-essential and the other part is essential, then I, I, th I think they should be able to qualify. Well, again, you know, yes, we set out the criteria, but also common sense is going to have to take a place. And if it is a question, Mr. Trask already offered his, uh, his help. So we can go with that, my opinion. Do we have a consensus on that? Yes, from my perspective, uh, unless you want to take a formal vote, which I would prefer. Uh, well, we, we're still going to have to get the funding anyway. Uh, Vice Mayor Carr, do you agree with that? Which, which portion are you asking about, Mayor? We're talking about the criteria, the whole thing. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, I, I, approve, I mean, I agree with uh, the initial criteria that was set forth. Uh, I would like to see staff to lean on the city uh, attorney if there's a business that falls under both essential and non-essential businesses. Uh, but I think we should stick with what we have. Um, and then with that interpretation that they, uh, they evaluate the, those two types of businesses. Okay. Everybody agrees with that? And Mayor, also the, the deadline to be next Thursday, I think it is, instead of this Friday. The, uh, the day that we actually set at the beginning. The initial one, yes. Yes. We all agree with that? Yeah, I think, okay. Mayor, a better question might be is if there's, if there's any objections. I, I think if, any, if no one speaks, everybody's going to agree to it. So. Well, I just want to make sure we're all okay with that. Okay. Um, now we go to uh, uh, discuss about funding. Um, obviously, $100,000 was not enough. And look at the numbers what uh, Mr. LeCour has provided us. I think he's ne he needs another $50,000. You agree with how, that, Mr. Lecouris? How much, Mayor? Fifty thousand. Mr. Lecouris, is that what you come up with? Yes. Is that what your uh, projection is? Yes. Fifty thousand dollars. Up to one hundred fifty. Yes. So, okay. Of course, if it's not, you're only going to use what uh, you know what uh, you need, right? Yes. Okay. Um, Mayor, may I point something out? Yes. Um, in the numbers that Mr. LaCourse uh, had provided us, uh, we had 87 that have been completed and approved. Um, pending the business license questions, um, that's 21. And then additional applications pending review, 34. Um, that comes out to 142. So I would suspect. Um, this is, yeah, that's what I said, 150 to make sure. Right, but there's going to be an additional, I would think there's additional applications coming in. And, and is that correct, city manager? Or, or Well, know? today was true. There was only a few that came in today. Um, because as you see, there was over 200 that came in uh, in the other day. So whether people are waiting, I, I don't have any way to anticipate, um, you know, how many is going to come in. But today was the first day. It was There was very few of them that came in today. Thank you. Well, Commissioner Vatikioris, do you think that uh, it's not enough? That you think we'll increase that to make no, sure I, that we have enough? No, what I'm looking for, Mayor, is, is just to satisfy what our own business needs are on an interim basis until the county countywide grant kicks in. That, that's what I'm looking well, for. Well, you know, you mentioned earlier about the, uh, uh, the, the county. My understanding is the county is only going to provide funding for the unincorporated businesses, not the ones in, in the city limits. The way we understand it is they were going to provide it for within the city limits. They were going to. They're going to provide the city as well, city That's limits we, as well. Initially, initially, what they said that was, but again, it's in the discussion process. But initially, they were talking about assisting the cities also. No. Again, we have to wait and see what they come up with. But uh, initially, they did not eliminate, say anything about eliminating the cities and only going in the county jurisdiction. I read the email, and, and it was addressed to all the municipalities. And I, my interpretation was that it was going to include both unincorporated and incorporated Pinellas County. 
Well, that, but, you but, that, that's that's uh, good for us. Yes, but of but obviously, yeah. I, I think the city manager is going to have to give us some feedback. But again, if the countywide plan is going to kick in at a greater amount than what we're offering, I don't have an issue with uh, covering the, certainly the additional applications that we've got. But I don't want to uh, go beyond uh, what the interim need would be before the countywide grant would kick in. That's simply me speaking. Well, exactly. We don't know what they're going to do either. So still. Right. So uh, we need to increase the amount. Uh, $50,000, what Mr. LeCure has recommended. Uh, you all agree with that? Uh, Commission Terrapani? What's the funding source? The, the same funding source, which is the unassigned fund, the, uh, yeah. the emergency fund, as we call it. I'm good with it. <clears throat> Vice Mayor Carr? Uh, yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, I would even say let's add another 5,000 um, for an additional five more businesses. If there's 143, I can't remember exact number. 142. 142. So you've got eight more businesses that can apply for it over the next week. Um, I mean, I would be open to pushing it up a little bit higher, but if the city manager only feels that he needs 150,000, then I'm fine with that. Commission Donovan. Yeah, let's let's increase it to one hundred and fifty thousand, and again, we, we can look at it as it progresses. Okay. Commission Vatikiotis. I have no objection to an additional fifty thousand. Oh, yeah. good. I also like. Uh, I agree with one hundred fifty thousand. Uh, if that's the case, I will uh, entertain a motion that we're gonna keep the same criteria and increase it to 150,000. Motion to approve the increase of 100, or to 150,000 and the approval of the criteria. A second. Roll call. Commissioner Vatikiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Carpenny? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Yeah, yes, thank you. You know, we uh, failed to ask for uh, uh, public comments. Miss um, Jacobs, do we have any uh, emails? We received no emails. Okay. Miss Dallas, do we have anyone that wishes to speak on this item? Would anyone wishing to speak, please raise your hand at this time. We have none. Thank you. Okay. Again, Mark, please give my uh, thanks and uh, congratulations to all the staff involved. Do an excellent job. So uh, Friday, you're going to cut checks, right? The first, the first group of checks will go out Friday morning. And and, and I like the uh, suggestion of uh, Vice Mayor Carr to uh, send a letter with that. So I don't mind if I sign them all individually. I just need to find out because I've got to find five of you and get them all signed. Um, I've got to do it um, by Thursday. It'd be a lot easier if I, if I only be the one to sign instead of get all five of them. It'd be kind of hard to do. You all agree with that? I mean, I don't even really think they need signatures. I, I think just a formal letter from the city itself saying, hey, we appreciate you. Let us know if we can do anything else. I, I don't think it, it even needs a signature. Any other opinions? I think you're I'm good either way. Mayor, I think your signature is fine. I, I, I think so too. I think it's more personal. I'm nice happy to mayor. sign them myself. Um, huh? I'm happy to sign as well, but at the end of the day, if you just list our names under the mayor and he could sign all of them, I'm happy with that as well. I think that serves a purpose too. Yeah. It's just not easy to get all five of us to sign, you know? And then we need to send those checks out. I agree. That's the only thing. But I, I prefer that we all sign it, but it's not easy to do. And we have uh, restriction on time. Again, I think all the names being on it and the mayor doing one signature, that would be very easy to do. Okay. We do that. All five names are on there. 
Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, we have now an addendum, which is the uh, verification of uh, employment planning director. And we go to uh, staff report, Mr. Lecours. Yes, as you know, for a while since last year, um, we've been looking for a planning director. We know over the past years, um, the trouble we have in filling any position in planning or in building, building and planning seem to be no matter if it's an inspector or on up to the building <clears throat> official or if it's a regular planner, all the way up to planning director, those positions are very hard to find. And we have been in a long process of trying to find one. Um, my recommendation to you tonight, again, is an offer because I have to make the offer um, to see if it's accepted. But of course, as you know, by the city charter, um, the board of commissioners has to ratify a department head selection of mine in the terms of hire. Um, you have to do that ahead of time. So uh, the person who I've talked to and like to offer the job is Carol Renee Vincent. She was our planning director for about 12 years, left in 2014 to go to the county and has been there since serving as a planning director there since 2016. Um, I had the pleasure of working with her all that time. It brings us combined 16 years of planning director experience. Um, she has been, since she went to the county, although we lost her, she has been our go-to person, especially in the past few years, that if we need something from the county, if Tarpon applicants are involved in the county process, as I'm sure many Tarpon people who have been involved in the county process can attest, that she is the one that staff has been able to go to to try to assist. Also, the joint applications that we got to deal with the county with, she's been the go-to person for us uh, to do that with. Um, she brings outstanding credentials. Um, she, the biggest thing about her, and, and if you can tell by my backup, I had asked Pat McNeese, who, who has just been working diligently the past five or six months to try to hold planning together um, with our consultant. And our, you know, we do have a consultant replacing a planning director now, but for instance, six October, we've already paid that consultant almost $50,000 to do that with. Um, so there's a tremendous lot of money going out for that. Um, Pat is also working with other planner who's been out on medical leave for about a month and we don't know when that person is going to come back. So she has been really trying to hold the fort down. And when I asked her, you know, I told her about the prospects. Of course, she's worked with Renee tremendously, especially in the absence of a planning director. Um, I just asked her to give some points about what the hiring of somebody with that experience, with that institutional knowledge, come in there, what you could do. And you see the three paid, the two or three pages of all the, the things we are behind on, the things we need to do, um, and what she could offer and come in um, without any, any, any time or any learning of the process or learning the state. Um, we have had some other candidates from out of state. We had three we were looking at. Two of them have dropped out. There is one still viable, but as we found out when we hired a, a, a planning director from out of state, there is probably a six month to year window to get up to date with Florida, the process and everything. So, so not only do we have somebody in this, in this case, if she accepts the offer that can get right in from day one going, um, we wouldn't have that, you know, that six months to year lag time where we would be farther behind on that extensive list of projects that needs to be done uh, by the planning department. So um, this is something obviously Pat McNeese was so excited about. You see all that she wrote that would help out with the vision. Our department heads are ecstatic about this hire because you know, the planning and zoning director affects so many other departments, public services, project management, building department, and having somebody who come in with the knowledge and experience to assist them, because there's a lot they do to assist them. Um, code enforcement, um, you know, so many areas. So 
to get somebody like that and not to have the window of time is just going to be tremendous for our other department heads and our other departments that, uh, you know, we need to get some work done and we've got somebody to do it by. So to me, this is a substantial win for the citizens, uh, for the department, for our progress. Um, if she accepts this job, um, the compensation that I've proposed um, for, to get a planner and to make sure they keep there is not out of line. In fact, if you, if you did, one of the things we did and I had Rod Herring do was that if she'd have stayed and, and gone through a process and got today, you're almost talking about the same salary should have been today. Obviously we're competing at $128,000 salary from the county, but um, I think, and I've always thought that uh, Renee's heart was in city planning and uh, you know, there's a difference from going bigger and higher up in organizations and what you can do. And I always thought that her heart was in city planning. So I think that would be one of the aspects to come back. And uh, obviously there's so many challenges uh, for her to do and enhance her resume doing here and getting done that is a great opportunity um, to do. Been at the county six years, gone through the county process, but I really think that uh, this is something where she can really sink her teeth in and get a lot of things done that, that, that won't get done. So I don't think, I absolutely know if any, anybody who deals with cities or deals with what they're doing to ha ha hire these people, uh, the compensation is nowhere out of line um, to go through. So again, I ask your endorsement and, and my ability to make that offer after this meeting um, to ask her to come be our city planning director. Well, thank you, Mr. Lequeris. Um, I think uh, Ms. Renee Vincent is very well qualified planner. There's no question about that. She worked for the city for uh, many years, I believe 12 years. As a planning director, she did many good projects. She completed the uh, CRA, the Smart Code, Special Plan, Area Plan. Uh, she also completed the ER uh, and many other projects. Ms. Vinso, again, is very well qualified. She'll be, she's very capable to manage the department and complete projects that we need to do right now and bring the department to the higher level. But also, Mr. Lacuras, I have several uh, some questions that I'd like to ask. Um, you know, Ms. Vincent left us once and she went to the county for higher pay. Do you think that she will leave us again and go into another local government if somebody offers her more money? <laughs> and then the city of Tarver Springs again will be looking for another planner. Uh, my other question would be is what kind of a guarantee do we have that she actually likes Tarver Springs, like you say, and she's going to stay here? Um, um, and, and uh, the other question that I like to ask is why she wants to quit the county uh, if he actually she makes more money than she will make in here. Um, my uh, last question is uh, the salary that you're offering to her, uh, is that compatible to the other cities with our, uh, the, the, the size of Tarpa Springs? Mm -hmm. So I actually have three four questions to you. Mm -hmm. I, I, again, um, you're always going to be dealing with no matter who you bring in. I mean, we had the experience. If you remember the gentleman we brought in from out of state, um, brought in a very good gentleman from out of state. He was in his six to nine months, um, getting just up to date to, to be able to go forward and do our projects. And he left us for a job in Arizona. So no matter if, if it's the outside candidates, you're always doing that. I truly think, and I wouldn't offer the job if I truly think, I think she's at the point of her career that she wants to come back. And I think she wants to, to do a, go back to the city and do a city job here. I'm hoping we'll know if she accepts it because then my feelings are right. So I think we have a good bet. Can I guarantee if somebody comes offering her a big amount of money or like with, um, with Heather, somebody in the private sector goes grabs her, can I guarantee it? I just don't feel it from talking with her and dealing over the years. And, you know, there's a lot of things I know I faced it in my career when you're talking about going higher up and stuff. It's good to go to a county, to a state, to the feds, 
Um, I've had many people, not only on the city manager side, but on the police side, want to go up. Sometimes when you move up, you know, I always say there's no better place to work and there's no better place where you can leave your mark. There's no better place where you can accomplish things is that at the, at the lower, at the city level of government and stuff. And, and I think that's the case. You can go to the county and there's a lot of things you can do, but, but really it'd be like me going to the county sheriff or me going somewhere else. You know, after a while, I knew if I ever made that move, I'd want to go back to my city or another city and do there. I think that's the case here. I think that's why she wanted to come here. Um, I think that's why she'd want to come back and settle. And I think as good of a chance as we do with an out of state applicant that we're left with, um, you know, you know, I think she will stay. Now, can I guarantee that? No, but I think as much as I can any of the candidate that I bring you and 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 put to you to ratify, I think as much as any of them. I can. The uh, last question in answer about the salary that you offer, is that a comparable to the other cities? Oh yeah, very, very much. In this market for there, it, it's, uh, you know, it's on the low side. It's, you know, it's probably going to be on the low side, but I don't think if it's a matter of money, I think she'd stay at the county. If she accepts this offer, then it's not a matter of money and stuff. So it's, it's probably on the lower end. Thank you. Vice Mayor Carr. Thanks, Mayor. Um, Mark, thanks for bringing this to, uh, to us tonight. Um, as we can see, there's a lot of items that are uh, pending uh, on top of the day-to-day -day operations of running the city planning department uh, with one staff member. Um, I did think it was kind of odd when Renee left the city um, and the way she left. But uh, with that, uh, I see that she's got some great experience while she's at the county. Um, and uh, I worked well with her when I was on city boards as uh, when she was a planner here in Tarpon Springs. Um, I do, uh, I, I do, I would like to see some more direction coming from the board. Um, on what the planning department's working on from a project standpoint. Uh, I know Heather had some projects that she liked working on, but I would prefer that we give direction as a board on what projects are being worked on uh, first in a priority list um, that we get a consensus and we, we encourage the staff to work off that instead of uh, some pet projects. Um, but I support Ms. Vincent coming back to Tarpon Springs uh, at the salary. I think you brought up a good point. Um, if she stayed at Tarpon Springs and um, continued to receive her uh, merit increases, that should be around the same amount. Um, I see her education is in line with uh, a director, I believe, uh, and she's really grown in the county as well. So I think she's a good fit here in Tarpon Springs, and I would support to hire. Commissioner Terrapani? Can't hear you. Yeah, I guess you know. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. Um, regarding Ms. Vincent's hire, I think that, uh, you know, she has an, a wealth of institutional knowledge as it relates to Tarpon Springs. Um, you know, as, as it's been discussed tonight, she was here for 12 years prior to uh, her shift to go work at uh, the county. Um, you know, I think probably what some people would be upset about is the way in which uh, she left. Um, but I can tell you from working with Renee as an elected official and not as an elected official and in both capacities with her as a director in the city of Tarpon Springs and in the county, um, she, she can be uh, as professional as they come. Um, it's not uncommon to have uh, some controversial issues come up when you're in the planning department like that. Um, and when that happens, you know, unfortunately, some sides can be taken. And, you know, in some cases, when you're on the opposite side, it's natural to have uh, a little bit of controversy or to butt heads. Um, that said, while she's been at the county, um, she's always supported applications that have come from Tarpon Springs, to my knowledge. And I know firsthand that she has uh, helped members of our staff and even uh, applicants uh, with some direction as it relates to Tarpon Springs issues. Um, I think that, you know, there was there was a point in time in 2014 when, when the, I feel like all of the departments were under the building services department, which was probably not the best uh, management of our departments to begin with. Um, and there was a dust up as we all know, and uh, the manner in which she left, you know, could be interpreted one way or the other. 
for me, it's more about where we're at as a community right now within Tarpon. I feel like our growth is exponential um, and we've been struggling with the uh, with hiring a, a planning director basically since 2014. There was a small period in time when we had uh, when we had Heather and she was a team player and she wanted to get projects done and really worked hard to do so uh, and, and really brought to the table uh, some enthusiasm as it relates to finding a way to a challenging problem versus just being against it uh, it's because it wasn't easy. That said, she left for the same reasons that we're talking about. I mean, she, she stayed in Tarpon for a few years. She got some good experience under her belt and then she left for the private sector. So being that, again, playing to our strengths, being that the, the planning department and the development services department is kind of in my wheelhouse within my profession. Um, since Ms. Vincent has left myself as vice mayor, as commissioner, et cetera, have been in the loop with the city manager regarding these, uh, the new hires. Um, and in the loop with the applications that have come forward basically since 2014. Um, and I can tell you that few have been worthy of a hire, which the city manager has tried to do, and it is not an easy task. There have not been very many applicants that I would say uh, would fit as a planning director here in Tarpon Springs. So, you know, all of those things to be considered with the amount of money that we're literally hemorrhaging with the planning consultant, which I think we all uh, can appreciate the magnitude of having to pay an outside consultant and not somebody on staff. Um, her institutional knowledge, uh, coupled with some of her experience in writing the code, such as like the special area plan, for example, which covers probably our biggest area in town that is experiencing growth and redevelopment um, at a rapid pace. I think it's imperative that we get somebody well qualified to help try and take the reins and lead the planning department. Uh, we struggled long enough with trying to replace a building director um, or, let's see, director of uh, development services, which we have a great one now. Kevin Powell does a, does a great job. So I think if after basically 2014, which is going on six years, for this community to have a, a legit planning director again that can basically pick up where she left off and know the players and know the code, I think that that's something that we should all strongly consider and I'll support the hire. Commissioner Donovan. Yeah, th thank you, Mayor. Before my comments, I did just have two quick questions for our city manager. Um, one, you, you've worked with, with her before, so I just want to know what kind of traits you saw in her then that lead you now to wanting to bring her back. Again, her work ethic, um, her enthusiasm, her working with other departments, especially with other departments. Again, planning involves so many other departments and the needs to put your work aside a bit to help the areas that, that so a team player. And, and what really show, has shown out is from the time she left and, and went to the county, she didn't forget about us. And when a department head of planning or other needed her help um, with the many issues of the county, she jumped right in and helped us with it and stuff. So it even continued when she went to the other place. So. I just think any qual every quality um, you have in a planner between knowledge, education, um, just what she's gained in six years of working in the county in the different areas she's worked in um, brings far more strengths to us than she even had before with that ability and with all the things coming up that we're going to be having to work with the county on and issues and stuff. Um, we've got no better person to know the insides of of working with them than there. So I think those are the biggest strengths that it gives to us and are moving forward in all the projects we're going to do citywide and ones that we're going to need the county to be involved in also. And then I, I know you already mentioned the number, but how much are we spending and how much have we spent in consultant fees? Right now I got Ron Herring to do real fast um, um, since October, which is new budget year. Um, through, I believe, February, somewhere in February when we made the last payment. So it'd be October to February. It's at four, about 49, just under $50,000, 49 and some change thousand that we spent since October for the consultant to assist with the planning. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly excited to get somebody that isn't a consultant in that position. Um, and all, I mean, if I can drop a sports analogy, you don't hire a head coach and not let him go get his assistant coaches. Um, so I think this is well within your responsibility as city manager. Uh, so I support the hire. Thank you. 
Commissioner Tikiotis. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I just before I get started, so <laughs> I guess what the city manager is saying, if Ms. Benson gets hired, we're not going to be spending any more money on consultants. Is that right? In the planning department? On the consultant that's involved with doing the day-to-day -day activities of, of planning. I mean, they'll finish up some of the things they're working on now, but specifically our consultant that's in, you know, as part of our planning department, that's going to end pretty fast. But what about the other areas? We're still going to need consultants there too. I'm talking about some of these plans that supposedly Ms. Vincent's an expert on and she's going to be tremendous help to doing all of these. Are we going to need consultants to assist her or is she going to do it? It, it depends how fast you want to go on things and what you do. We may need some consultant help, um, yeah. comprehensive plans or, or things like that. But again, it all goes on how fast you want to get other things done and whether you want her working on one of those or some assistance to get that move faster. Um, so other things can be done also. That, that'll be up to this board and Commissioner Carr talks about the directions and the priorities this board wants to do. And we'll have to decide in that time um, um, if there's any needed on big major projects or, or not. Um, that's the decision you'll make as a board. All right. So let me just say, I, I sent everyone a memorandum uh, this afternoon and I received a, a very brief response for the mayor referring that I uh, hold my comments to these meetings. Um, the memorandum is fairly um, detailed. I could certainly read it if that's what the mayor would like. I could also summarize it. But let me just say, um, and I understand his point, so in, uh, I'll keep that in mind in the future, but we, in order to try and save time, I chose to send it forward and I discussed it with the city attorney first. Um, I, I'm not going to support Ms. Vincent. I mean, let me just, uh, Ms. Commissioner Sieber said I vote for my heart. I'm voting with my heart on this one. I was there when the turmoil and the stress that occurred back in 2014 concerning the sponge Docks project. I understand that a lot of the problem was laid at uh, the development services director's feet at that time. But um, the problem is they could have stopped when they listened to people, and they didn't. They continued on. And Ms. Vincent led us down the wrong road at that time, and I have absolutely no faith that she's not going to lead us down the wrong road again. And it's going to be up to the commission to get involved, and I, quite frankly, don't want to start hearing it from residents again. Um, yes, she did leave. But I just want to point out, to the city manager and all the commissioners. Um, Mr. LaCourse hasn't left, he stayed through thick and thin, good times, bad times. Chief Young has stayed through good times and bad times. Chief Cochin has stayed through good times and bad times. Paul Smith for over 20 years through good times and bad times. Tom Function for at least 18 years through good times and bad times. Ms. Vincent's not one of them, and yet we're going to be paying her the exact same amount as these others with the exception of Mr. Function. So I have a real problem with that. I think these individuals that I mentioned have just tremendous amount of responsibility managing their departments and providing critical services on a 24-7 basis, and yet we're going to be paying a planning director the same amount of money when the one that left, we were paying $80,000. And I understand maybe perhaps Ms. Irwiler left to get additional pay because she was earning 82,000. But also remember uh, city manager, you pointed out to many people that laying it at the commission's feet for her, re for her leaving because of the pressure put on her for not uh, supporting some consultants for the various things that she wanted to accomplish. So, I, I think she left for some good reasons. Um, I, I just don't think that Mrs. Vincent, given that how she left, and she left the city hanging, um, she and the assistant planning director, if that's what uh, the other fellow that left uh, his position's name was, and we we're just kind of sitting there staring at each other about what next. So. I'm not in support of hiring her. I think that there's other options. My feeling is um, $50,000 since October, 
is to be honest with you, it's actually less than half of what we're going to be paying Mrs. Uh, Vincent. Fifty thousand dollars is less than one hundred and twelve thousand dollars, and if you include all the the uh, um, all the uh, the additional benefits that she gets, it's going to be about one hundred and sixty or seventy thousand. So, as far as I'm concerned, we could be spending one hundred and sixty or one hundred and seventy thousand dollars on a consultant, and it would be equivalent to having Ms. Vincent here at one hundred and twelve thousand um, dollars. I I just want to point out that I really value loyalty as, as a department head and people that work for the city of Tarquin Springs. I just don't see it. Um, you know, Chief Coach, he's obviously, I was going to say he's sitting next to you, but obviously that's not the case. Um, he's since a patrolman, he's came on board. I just, I, I just kind of look, I just can't, to be honest with you, I can't, I'm not going to be able to look at their faces and say, okay, we're hiring somebody that left us hanging back at the amount of money that you're getting paid because we feel that that's what we need to pay somebody to get that person in right now. I, I had a brief conversation with the city manager that I think that there's other options available. I think we have a couple of staff people that I would prefer giving them as at least on an interim basis until the hiring climate for the plan, planning director improved, uh, would improve at least give them an opportunity to uh, prove their mettle as far as a, a administration over the planning department uh, while keeping the um, uh, consultant on board. I have no issue with Ms. McNeese and, and the assistance of Louis Serta. I think they've done well given the circumstances. And again, I think the city manager has other options, but I'm not going to support Ms. Wilson. There's too much. I, I, the other part of it, not even looking at the staff, the senior staff in the face, there's a number of people that are not making 120,000, uh, 112,000 that are in the $90,000 range, uh, quite frankly, that have as much responsibility, if not more, than a planning director. Yet we're still going to be paying uh, Ms. Vincent about $20,000 more than these other extremely important and critical people in Tarpon Springs. The planning director is one. Um, he, for the most part, filled in for Mr. De Pesqua. He's making in the $90,000 range, yet we're going to hire somebody that left the city, <laughs> uh, just left us hanging, and offer them $112,000. I, I simply can't support that. Um, that's all I've got to say, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I th we heard from everyone. Uh, Mr. LeCourge, you did answer my, uh, my questions, and I do believe that uh, Ms. Vincent is very capable, very knowledgeable. Her, uh, she's not going to need any transition period to uh, start working on the projects that we're expecting her to do. But uh, I am a little uh, concerned in, in regards to uh, uh, if we get some kind of uh, difficulties into uh, in the department, if she's going to leave us again. Um, but because you, you, as you, as a city manager, you, um, you're making the selection and you want us to endorse it, I will, I will support your decision, but with uh, uh, very skeptical about it. Any other comments? I've got one more, Mayor. Sure, go ahead. Um, I, I just want to reiterate what uh, Commissioner Terrapani talked about. Um, with the institutional knowledge, the fact that Ms. Vincent was here in Tarpon Springs, knows what she's getting into, knows the history of Tarpon Springs, and you, it's very difficult to put a value on that, um, in my opinion. And uh, although she left, she's willing to come back. Um, I think that says a lot about somebody if they're willing to come back um, and bring back their talents to the area. Uh, from the standpoint of um, dollars, uh, these positions demand a high dollar amount. I understand that. Um, it's a significant amount of money, but it's a, a significant responsibility that we're putting on this position to have a lot of great things done in Tarpon Springs. So uh, I'm excited for Ms. Vincent to hopefully accept the position and um, the staff to move forward and the city to move forward in the direction that we needed to go. Thank you. Um, I'd like to go to uh, uh, public comments. Ms. Jacobs, do we have any emails? We receive no emails. 
Mr. Ellis, do we have anyone that is wishes to speak? Anyone wishing to speak, please raise your hand at this time. We have none at this time. Thank you. The chair will entertain a motion. Unless somebody has any more comments. I hear none. Mr. LeCourge, do you want to comment? If not, we go to, uh, uh, we'll entertain a motion. Need a I'll motion. motion. I'll make a motion to um, approve hiring Renee Vincent or Carol Renee Vincent um, with the salary and benefits proposed and the city manager's backup as planning director of Tarpon Springs. Second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Vatikiotis? No. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lagosas? Yes. Thank you. Well, that concludes the agenda tonight. And we're going to go to staff comments. Chief, any comments? Mm -hmm. Wanted to wish everyone uh, the best of health as we go through this COVID-19 crisis. I know that um, everyone's doing a really good job and, and we'll all get through this together. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Trask. No comments. Thank you. Mr. Lequeurs. Um, I sent to you today the, the items that I have so far um, for the work session coming up the 21st and asked you to send any more items to me. We got a rather long agenda and stuff, but if anybody else um, has any items for that work session, 6.30 next Tuesday for the work session, uh, just send those to me and uh, we'll get them on the agenda. Thank you. Understand you got mine already. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Jacobs. No comments. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Carr. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, again, I just want to express uh, thanks to the rest of the board for your support as Vice Mayor tonight. I uh, would like to uh, wish our Orthodox residents um, a happy Easter uh, this coming week. And I hope everybody else had a, a great Easter this past weekend. And I would like to also thank the clerk's office for all their hard work that they've done uh, for the election. I missed that on my, uh, on my speech. And uh, again, looking forward to serving with you all over the next few years. Commission Terrapani. Sorry, no comments, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Commission Donovan. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I just want to say thank you to city staff and all of our first responders for working with us and getting through this. I mean, it, it's not easy for anybody, but uh, a big thanks to them. And also, I'm really excited for the new board. Uh, I think we're going to do a lot of great things together. Thank you. Commissioner Vettichiotis. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I wish to personally thank uh, Ms. Van Horn and her IT staff for doing a terrific job. Um, I spent some time with Mr. Ellis this past week and coming up to speed, at least crawling <laughs> with regard to the iPad. And I get stressed out just turning the iPad on, hoping that the screen would come up and being able to log on. But her department, uh, in order to produce this meeting that we're going through tonight, um, and, and, and in looking at Mr. Ellis as he was talking to me, he goes, oh my goodness, here we go again. And, and um, he began to get a little stressed looking himself. So I finally asked him, I said, how, how do you deal with this? He says, well, it, it's, you know, we, we deal with it. So um, it's a, I, I told him it's equivalent. What I see that they do is equivalent to um, a uh, flight traffic controller trying to land five 747s on the same runway in five minutes. I think they just do a tremendous job and I just want to thank them for producing these meetings for us. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I'd like to uh, remind to our uh, fellow uh, Tarponites to continue to follow the uh, CDC guidelines um, to uh, exercise social distancing and to avoid large gatherings. And again, I'd like to thank our police officers, the firefighters, the city workers, our uh, hospital 
uh, personnel, the doctors, the nurses, the staff, and administrators for working in a difficult environment. Um, Mr. City Attorney, uh, when we uh, have a new commission, you always provide us with training uh, in regards to Sunshine Law. I was just going to remind you if you're going to do that this time as well. I think it's going to be very helpful. I'd, I'd be happy to do that. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to wish to uh, a happy Orthodox Easter. And uh, well, that concludes the agenda tonight. And that concludes the, uh, the regular session. It's adjourned at 8.55 p.m. Good night. Thanks. And I'd like to thank I the IT department for doing a great job. Helping thank us you, out. guys.